<laughs> Welcome to the Unapologetic Patriots Show. My name is Ted, and we are on the No Apologies Broadcasting Network. I don't know what's going on with my comments. They're not showing up. There they are. And I have a special guest tonight, Danny, and I'll, uh, I'll have you introduce yourself in a second. But, you know, i got to pay the bills, so i got to talk to the sponsors and all that. Go for it. So uh, I want to direct you guys out there to uh, Etches of Sketches. My wife runs the company. It's a great company for custom glass etching. Please visit Etches of Sketches on Facebook. Um, also, www.dons-classic-creations.com. Custom embroidery. She's doing some patriotic stuff now. It's going to be phenomenal. Uh, the Guardians Militia, if you want to join something that's bigger than you, and it don't have to be hardcore, but, I mean, we still do our stuff. It's just not as hardcore. Um, join the Guardians Militia here in North Carolina, as well as visit the NoApologies101.com. That's www.noapologies101.com. That is the network that I'm on, man. Big Sarge is awesome. He's going to have a phenomenal show tomorrow night at 10. And be watching out for some live feeds that are going to pop up. Um, yeah, that are going to pop up uh, tomorrow. Uh, Sarge is doing one about the march there, Malcolm. Welcome, Malcolm. Um, Sarge is actually doing a live feed, I believe, uh, from the march. And I'm going to be doing one from a local business. Who has summoned me here? What's up, John? Courtney? What's up, Ty? So, yeah, Danny, uh, if you would, if you don't mind, first of all, thank you for being here. Appreciate Not at it. all. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> and uh, second of all, um, I guess, do you want to tell everybody about yourself or, or just introduce yourself or anything like that? Uh, no? This place, Northerners, should have been born here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, well, not, no, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Fortunately, I was I was born up north, very north, like north of the border. Uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, as a matter of fact, 1954, November 22nd. Yes, Kennedy was assassinated on my ninth birthday. Uh, yes, I'm a naturalized citizen, was naturalized when I was five years old. Uh, I came here legally, <laughs> okay? What's up, Jen? Mommy and Dad. <laughs> Mommy and Daddy. We're American citizens. Uh, let's see now. My father was second generation from Canada. My mother was third generation from the county of Cork. Yeah. <laughs> A fine, fine lass she is. She's in her fourth month of her 90th year. A crazy woman oh, that God she bless. is. God bless. Oh, yeah. She, I, I took her to the doctor on Monday, I did. And we saw... No, honest to God, we saw an Irish doctor, too. <laughs> He, uh, he felt my praties, but uh, we won't talk about that now. <laughs> uh, in any event, uh, yeah, I'm a naturalized citizen. I was adopted as well. Uh, so, hey, uh, don't tell me about DACA. Don't tell me about, uh, uh, gee, you shouldn't go back and all that kind of stuff. And we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on that later. Uh, yes, I'm 64 years young. Uh, I can do shit that I've seen. I, I work in a place uh, that... Uh, I, I see uh, patrons of our establishment that um, personify the phrase worthless as breastuses on a boar hog. Uh, good man, I'm going to get in my power chair now. You see, you see, I was going to say, you see these guys? I just turned over the show to Danny. Um, <laughs> apparently, apparently, Danny is now running the Unapologetic Patriot. Welcome. <laughs> he asked me to introduce myself. I, I, was, I grew up in New Jersey. I was adopted. I grew up in New Jersey. I've, I've lived up in the Northeast most of my life, if not all of my life. Uh, Great Lakes and whatnot, so on and so forth. Uh, grew up in the New York metropolitan area. And What's up, Ciccone? Yes, we have, instead of a cup of coffee in the morning, we have an argument instead to wake up. <laughs> all right, well, I'm from Brooklyn, uh, New York. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, so <laughs> where I grew up, uh, we smelled you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was the pig farms over uh, over in the uh, in Oh, land, we just so. thought that was the Jersey River, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, where, that's where you guys decided to bury all your all your shit, you know. At least Danny has a great name. Body yes, parts. he does, Dan. Yes, he does. All right, so welcome, Jen. Welcome, Malcolm, Jordan, uh, John, Courtney, Sacconi, my brother. What is up? And Dan Dan Rodriguez says at least you have a good name. Yeah, because oh, Daniel, me boy, <laughs> it's a fine name, it is. Hello, how this is, are you? This is going to be a long show. Buckle in. <laughs> Just buckle in for the fucking ride. Hey, honest to God, this is only coffee. Do we have any? 
Do we have any booze? So yeah. we've got. No, booze. I do oh, not <laughs> want alcohol. Yeah, I, I have to some, drive home. I can make some more coffee. Do you take it black or do you take it uh, sure? Grounds is great. <laughs> What's up, James? <laughs> Give me something to chew on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. All right, so, uh, you know, at some point, at I'm some point, at some point, I got to get into Please, this. Please, right. I beg your pardon. Yes. So, uh, Mark, what's up? Um, what do we have here? Mark, another Mark. Uh, Marky Mark. Yurovich. 2,500 pages. Oh, we're going to get there. Oh, we're definitely going to get there. Don't worry about that, yeah. my friend. Uh, what's he got in the cup? Just water, I promise. He's just naturally nuts, but that's why I love him. No, I had, um, I, I survive on caffeine, and that's it. I yeah. I very, very, very rarely drink. I smoke like a fiend. I'm not doing that because I'm out of respect for Ted. Do appreciate that. That's all right. But um, uh, yeah, I hope there's a Jammu in that cup. Oh, uh, uh, a Jammu. I don't What's know. What's a Jammu? Oh, there's Jammu in that cup. I'm thinking. Uh, I hope there's Jammu in know. that cup. All right, so we gotta get to the show, man. We gotta get to the show. You can wait have a minute. Does that swimmies in it? <laughs> oh. Um. <coughs> all right. So welcome everybody. It's gonna be a great show. Uh. All right, Omnibus Bill. The Omnibus Bill. <laughs> Omnibus. Uh, yeah, M Omnibus is right. All right, so let me just give you some facts and figures on this, and then we're going to get Danny's uh, opinion on it, um, and we'll go from there. Oh, Jameson. That's what you meant, Jameson. Some uh -huh. fine Irish whiskey. Um, all right, so it's basically a hundred or a uh, hundred. $1.3 trillion to fund the government Ow. through September. Yeah, Ooh. did you feel that? Right up the ass. Jeez. Yep, right up the ass. All right. Um, I'll talk about that one. Yeah. 1.6 billion for the wall, which is peanuts. Um, it, it's it's ridiculous how much how who's little wall? for for well it's supposed to be our wall. No, whose wall is it really? Whose wall? I don't know whose wall is it. I say it's our wall. Tunisia, Jordan, um, Palestine. Okay. It's everybody else's wall. When you start to examine the documentation, and I and honest to God, folks, I have not read this thing. Well, if you had but, to be Superman. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> I there are certain channels that I watch on YouTube, Ted's being one of them, uh, as rare as I see them. Uh, nonetheless, I, I see some other ones. Stefan Malinu is an individual that I, I widely suggest that you individuals at least take a look at. Uh, he's, a, he's an incredible individual as far as I'm concerned with regards to, to critical thinking, um, the Socratean uh, logic. Uh, but nonetheless, he started looking at it, and Stefan is one of those individuals that will look at the dark sides of things as well. We're f we are funding walls for countries other than our own. <laughs> other than our own, ladies and gentlemen. I don't understand this. We are supposed to be protecting our country. That's what we are supposedly being good Americans and paying our taxes like good Americans should for our government to protect our country. Whose country are they actually protecting? See, sorry folks, this is you lose. This is gonna be great. Uh, Joanne, she says, hello, Ted and guest. His name is Danny. Sorry, I don't know your name. Hello, Joanne. Now you do. Um, can't watch now, however, I will later. I'll share it two have a good night thank you and you have a good night as well john says i kind of like this idea because it's politically incorrect and i really don't give a shit at this point in time john says we should just make the wall out of landmines it would be much cheaper oh yes um it'd be a deterrent shout the passion out ted yes shout the passion out um it, it's it's danny is uh danny is a friend of mine and and i i, I like i love the guy dearly he's he's awesome he uh um, he uh, he rants just as much as I do. It's just that he doesn't get in front of a camera to do it. Um, so I, I I've been trying to get you on the show since I started the show. Yeah. I mean, so we finally got to to hook up and do this. Uh, wait a minute, Ted. Did you say BS is in DC? <laughs> now, if any of the original people remember during Christmas, yeah, we went I got a mug. Live. Yep, we yeah, went live. Got he got a mug from Etches of Sketches. I got, I got mugged yeah. by Etches of Sketches. Yeah, there you go. You should get mugged. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the, the liberal line tomorrow. Etches of Sketches, mugs, patriot. Um, and so, it felt so good. <laughs> John says, we don't even need landmines. Just put the signs up saying there are landmines. I'll pay. There you go. 
Jordan says, this is going to be a long but great show. Just made a sandwich, and I'm in for the long ride. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Popcorn. Yep, hang on. All right, so let me get back to the uh, – I, I do love your points. I mean, if we're funding other people's walls, why the fuck can't we fund our own? That's number one. And if we look at the finances of it, we're, we're, we're spending anywhere from 100 to 130 – some people say as much as $180 billion a year on illegal immigrants being here, whether it be court cases, education, welfare, uh, um, health care – all kinds of different things, uh, due process, legal representation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're spending anywhere from 100 to $180 billion per year, not over the course of the last 10 years, no, per fucking year, and it's only going up and up and up because we're allowing more and more and more of them here. So we're, we have enough money sitting in just that. We cut out the welfare. We cut out all, hell, if we just cut out the welfare for these illegal immigrants, we have enough money to fund the wall. Right then and there, we have enough money to fund the wall. But, but we're not smart enough to see this because we're too politically correct. But before we get, I know you want to rant on that. Just give me one second. No, I'm, um, I'm just, In this bill, there's a ton of pork for the Democrats. There's 2,300 pages. Nobody except for maybe Rand Paul even got through the majority of them. Okay, um, I'm telling you, it's one of those you need to you need to pass it in order to see what's in it. What was that? Pelosi said that, right? With uh, Obamacare. With Obamacare. That fucking Nazi bitch. But anyway, so it's the same thing. The Republicans are doing the same exact thing. And understand this, that it wasn't passed or it wasn't negotiated on by all of Congress, by all of the Senate. It was negotiated and passed, basically, you know, crafted by Pelosi, Schumer, uh, Feinstein. I'm sorry, not Feinstein. Uh, Pelosi, Schumer, McConnell, and Ryan. Those four people are the ones that did this bill behind closed doors together. Okay? They didn't include their own constituents, their own party. All right, the Democrats got a fucking shit ton for their side, and all we got, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's good, you know me, I love my military, but all we got was $1.6 billion for the wall, and the military did get finally funded the way it needs to be funded, and they got pay raises, which they desperately needed. So that's it. That's what we got, as far as I know. I mean, if something else comes out, fine. But as of right now, that's all I know. The rest of it is all for the fucking Democrats. There's money going to Planned Parenthood. There's money going to uh, the, 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 the tunnel between New York and New Jersey. Schumer's fucking pet super tunnel. It, it, there's money going to foreign lands for fucking uh, 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 financial aid and, and uh, you know all kinds of shit. Because, you know, we're the fucking, we're the band-aid to the world, even though we're $21 trillion in debt. Con. Yeah. We are the big con. Joanne says, I invited several people for now and we'll share it too. Why wait? Thank you. John says, uh, we can have some loudspeakers with sound effects that play an occasional boom when the sound of an illegal <laughs> alien screaming. I love it. I love it. I, and I love the fact that it's so fucking politically incorrect. I'm down with it. Robin says, McDa uh, Robin Nathan McDaniel says, hello. Welcome to the show. I don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Robin. Um, so... So with that, let's just touch on the bill, because I know we're both really okay. passionate about, about illegal immigrants. I know we are. But, but let's stick with the bill. What are your overall, because I know you could go on forever, but just give me just give me what you got as far as the bill. And then we'll get into Trump and the backlash and all that. But let's talk about just the bill. How do you, how do you think it shakes out? Who got the better deal? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How does it shake out? How you doing, Matt? Well, there's... there's how does it shake out? In which, in which direction? Is well, that's what I mean. Like, in, give me your overall um, thoughts on the bill. What do you think of it? There are individuals that are already, speaking of Trump being ousted as the president right. by 2018, mm -hmm. um, there, are all, there are always going to be those individuals who are going to go to the extreme and make any, any amount of irrational commentary that they so choose because they speak from emotion, as Amy Goodman and Democracy Now. You watch that for a while, and your brain goes to goes to soup. <laughs> uh, and it, hey, she, she collects her her, or the her check Turks. from Mr. Soros or the Young Turks. I uh, <laughs> chink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. There was no Armenian genocide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, he's on the he's on the side of history. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, well, according to him, he's on but the right side of history. But anyway, what, what, what I see this, uh, I see this as a, a set of circumstances where a lot of people are going to 
they're going to lay into Trump like there's no tomorrow. Yep. Do they have a reason to? Yeah. I was waiting. All right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've met Donald twice. Now that's awesome. Um, I don't. I, I don't profess that Donald will ever remember me. Uh, believe it or not, I worked on Wall Street for seven years, and I happened to, uh, for a couple of those years, I was a compliance director in a stocks and bonds firm. Uh, I got friendly with some of the attorneys uh, that worked with NASDAQ, uh, the NASD, which is now FINRA. Uh, but nonetheless, I got to go to a couple of functions, and I happened to shake Donald's hand. But I had the opportunity to, to, to stand back and listen to him speak. Um, even in a social setting, albeit, yeah, he's, he's not a small man by any no. stretch of the imagination. But he's 6'3", like 240. Yeah, I'm 5'11". Yeah. yeah. And, um, he's 6'3", like 240, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a big boy. And, you know, I, I'm not really crazy about his comb over. I have all my hair, but <laughs> this is all mine. But anyway, and it used to be down in my ass. That's what I heard. But uh, you've seen it. No. You, you never saw no, that? No, you Holy had short shit. hair when I met you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Um, this whole the whole bill. When I started when I started listening to all the different commentators, uh, whether it be as I said Stefan Melano, uh, Mike Cernovich, uh, yes I listen to Alex Jones. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, no hey hey you know I, I welcome all opinions on here. I would just you know we we discussed it before and I don't particularly. There are, in, to... there are individuals that are going to tear Trump a new asshole. Yeah. Uh, they're going to ask for his impeachment. They're going to demand his impeachment. Uh, I see the same pork barrel bullshit that I have seen for so long. I'm not. I'm trying not to get into taxes tonight. Uh, I have my own bailiwick that uh, I've done my own research. I understand 1913. I understand Jack, the Jekyll Island meetings. Uh, it's the rules, regulations, and statutes that none of us voted on! None of us! Now and yet we all sit there and say, oh, I'm a good American citizen. I pay my tax. I'm a taxpayer! You freaking idiot! <laughs> What's wrong with you? That's your money! And yes, we hand it over to them every time we get paid. Oh, I have my deductions. And hopefully, they'll give it back to me when I file. God, I hope it's by April 15th before I take it in the ass. You've got to be kidding me, people. There is an old man that won in Illinois. He uh, fought the man and won as far as taxes. But your tax dollars are paying for this little gem. Why? That's your money. That's my money. That's our money. We fund these people. Now, that's part of the problem. That's, We're their boss. That's the other way around. That's part of the problem is that we have, we have, and we're seeing it more and more, where they're in the Patriot community, there's people that are, I love this because I get to actually be the quiet one tonight. This is good. Um, <laughs> because normally I'm the one that has a fucking seizure on my desk. They're thinking that I'm going to blow a blood vessel out of my ear. Um, but uh, You want to put your earplugs in here? Yeah, right? No, nah, you're not bothering me. Oh. Any. Um, but, but I'm seeing a lot more in the Patriot community where, where I wanted to touch on this too. So, I, so let, me, let me just, my overall synopsis of your synopsis of the bill is you don't like it. Absolutely. Not. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Do you think, like Trump said, uh, President Trump said, I, I should still give him respect, he still is the president, um, like President Trump said, that he was basically signing it because of how much military spending. So in other words, he was held hostage by the Democrats and all of their pork for the military spending that they knew he wanted and desperately needed. Donald, kiss me, please. At least you can kiss me. Okay. There please, you just kiss me. And, you know, I'd help it if he blew, I, I would really appreciate a little Crisco, yeah. So, yeah. I've been taking it dry from the feds for quite some time, and the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor reserve. We'll so, uh, that later. so Trump said he signed up to protest, all right, um, and then, you know, 
my thing is this. I'm seeing it a lot in the Patriot community today saying, you know, it's, it's one or the other. Either, you know, Trump can do no wrong. Fuck you. I'm going to delete you if you uh, are criticizing him in any way, shape or form. And then the other side of the argument, which is, you know, oh, we're, that's it. We're losing the 2018 midterms. Uh, he's a one term president. Let's just stay at home and don't vote any more Republicans in because they just fucked us in the ass. This, that and the other thing, uh, you know, fucking hand over the government to the Democrats. Fuck it. I'm not seeing a middle ground, and I'd like to say that's where I come in and people like me come in, and I think where you would probably come in. It's okay, in my opinion, and you can weigh in on this, but it's okay, in my opinion, to criticize President Trump and Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan and all of them, but, you know, forget the Senate and the Congress for a second. Let's just go with Trump. It's okay to criticize him on when he does something wrong while still supporting him, like me personally. I think what he did today was a major fuck up. I really do. And it wasn't today. It was the lead up today. It was the lead up to today. Um, it was, it was, um, <laughs> James is waiting for me to pass out during a rant. Yeah, I saw that. Um, it was the lead up. He's too busy in his Twitter feed. He's yeah. too busy waiting about or worrying about Stormy Daniels and, and Karen McDougal and all of the fucking rest of them. He's too busy worried about, uh, um, Mueller and, and what's going on and, and J Joe Biden taking him out behind the woodshed and beating his ass. He's too worried about all of that bullshit and he's not seeing the threats that are right there in front of him. And the threats are that the swamp is not going down quietly. They are going to rise up like they just did. The four biggest players in the swamp as far as the elected players I'm with you on the SES but the elected players of the swamp uh, they just rose up said, hey, we're going to take a big, tr a big giant bite out of Donald Trump's ass and let's see if he goes for it or not. They backed him into a corner. He fell for it and he signed. And, and I think it's okay to criticize him for fucking up hugely on this. But if there was an election tomorrow, I would still vote for him. All right, I'm going to take, you in the other, I'm going to take this in another direction. Okay. All right. All right. I've, I am no genius when it comes to high finance. I'd be the first person to admit it. I understand options and derivatives and shit like that because okay. I had to be an options principal. Um, I understand how the stock market works. I understand how lending works. I understand how centralized banking works. Um, deficit, <laughs> deficit banking works. One of the things that we're dealing with here is an individual. I'm not going to sit here and say Donald Trump is a genius. I don't know what his IQ is. Yeah. It's not really relevant at this point. The fact of the matter remains, I'm wondering, and this is, th is going to be something for people to think about. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible that Donald, playing <laughs> four-level chess, 4D chess, just rope-a-dope these people. Now, now rope-a-dope to us or them? Yes. <laughs> yes. You sound just yes. like my, my daughter. Yes. <laughs> He's rope-a-dope us and he's also rope a dope his opposition number one donald trump i believe has no intentions of seeing the republican party survive okay all right okay i can actually and go he, along with that and, because he's a populist he's and, not a republican exactly yeah he's a populist nationalist all right and by virtue of that i believe that donald is is playing these people by allowing them to believe that they smoked his ass. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going to shake out those individuals that support him or don't. Donald is an individual, and it, I, yes, I read the, the art of the deal. Um, Donald is an individual that will look for people to question his rationale. He to wants question to be his decision. He wants, he to, be wants to be challenged. Right. That's part, that's part of his upbringing. That's okay. part of where he, where, he, where he grew up, the educational institutions that he attended. Okay. And, and I know that. that and I, I, don't mean, that I don't mean to interrupt this you. Is a guy, this is a guy that can, that can easily, easily walk into, walk into the Tuileries in Paris and be as elegant as, as his lovely wife. Right, right. But he can also drive a fucking D9 cat. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to interrupt you, but... Hit me. It's... it's <laughs> um, I like it. I know. I know that you're not like a diehard Trump trainer. I know you're not. Yeah. So, so like to hear that from you actually is pretty powerful because you're like me. 
you were voting for somebody else initially, and then when, when he became the nominee, you were going to vote for him because he was the nominee. He was better off than either one of you. I had, I had no intentions of voting for anybody else other than Donald. Oh, oh okay. I thought you were for, like, Cruz or Carson no, or something. No, not at all. Oh, okay. See, I, I, was, I, I was for Cruz, Cruz and then Cruz and Cru then... Cruz. And then, no. ben, ben Carson is a wonderful man. Yes, but Never he doesn't have the temperament to be he president. He does not have right. the capability right. of being able to be president. He's, hey, he, Rebecca. He's a, lot like Jim, he's a lot like Jimmy Carter in his yeah. demeanor. Yes. Yeah, not, not in his policy. Not necessarily his policy. Yeah, not in his policy. But, but uh, what I'm Ted getting Cruz, at is Ted Cruz, he's, constitutional conservative, he's, man. He's a constitutional, yeah. he's a constitutional conservative that I still, quench, I still question his lineage. Yeah, uh, not only do and I I'm question sorry. his lineage, but I question his, his, uh, his tactics. Because he, he did some really shady shit. Yes, he did. He really did. But uh, Marco but Rubio, case, yeah, same uh, Rubio's just a rhino. I, I don't even. He's not. He's not a. True, so he's a rhino. Bottom line but, for me is what Donald. What's what Donald signed? Yeah. Is it a ruse? I don't think Donald's this stupid. Okay. I honestly don't believe that he would take his base and flush it. Now I'm going to be, be the devil's advocate here. People are saying that the swamp can break even the, the best mind. Okay, the the deep state can break even even the best mind. How? Well, well, it's just by constant pressure. They walked him into this trap, and he fell into it. I mean, I don't agree. Well, remember, they have. I, I'm not saying I'm. I'm not saying That's I disagree okay. with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Okay. Okay. Um, the, what a lot of people are saying is that, you know, Mitch McConnell has been there forever. Paul Ryan is very versed in politics. Chuck Schumer is one of the most brilliant politicians that the world has ever seen. Even though we hate him, but he's very he's versed in, well, in politics, he really is. He, like, he knows he how to get... play the game. That's what I mean. That's, that's, what, I mean by, that's what I mean by brilliant. He's, he's brilliant at the game. I don't agree with him. I think he's a scumbag human being. But what I'm getting at is, as far as the game of politics, he's one of the best players. I should have used different words. He's one of the best players of the game of politics that we've ever seen. Okay, same thing with Pelosi, believe it or not. She's a fundraiser from fucking... God for the Democrats. So between these four minds that know the inner workings of Washington, left and right, center, everything, do you think that they're capable, between the four of them, in a secret meeting, to walk him into this trap? No. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, I, I want to I just, real quick, I want right. to just touch on a couple of comments because normally I'm very, very into or into the chat room, but obviously with a guest it's a little bit di more difficult. Um, uh... Oh, okay. I, my wife just actually told me that I have the wrong etches of sketches uh, tagged. I'll have to get to that. Uh, my brother says that you are louder than me. And he laughed about that. That's my brother, by the way. He's in Pennsylvania. Hi! Oh, my God. Okay, James is still waiting for me to pass out. Eight trillion uh, of the deficit is back is black budget military, and we can't fix our planes. Something's wrong here. Sacconi says I give him a D plus, which I actually want to get to that. Malcolm says I think he wanted to avoid another shutdown. Oh, I think that's what he, I think that's what he wants us to believe that he wanted. But then again, but then again, he could have. Matthew says, Wow, a D plus. He has done more for our country than any president in 20 plus years. I'd actually say almost 30 plus years. Um, after this bill, I gave him an A minus. Now, me personally, I'd probably give him more like a C plus to a B minus. Probably a B minus. I agree with you, and, and not to sound like Sean Hannity or an apologetic uh, person for, or an apologist for um, Donald Trump, because you guys know I'm not one of those blind, um, blind uh, followers of Donald Trump. I'm just not. But let me, let me just go through this. Jobs are up. The economy is up. Um, home ownership is up. Minority home ownership is through the fucking roof. How, uh, minority business ownership is through the fucking roof. I should take notes. Um, why? Why? Because I'm going to disagree with every point you've got. Really? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, every so everything is, is, the economy is going up. However, the deficit is also going up. Now, Donald Trump says that we'll be able to outgrow this, this, uh, this deficit that the tax plan put us in and all of this. But in any case, he is doing more cutting regulations, foreign policy. I mean, look, North Korea is coming to the table for the first time in ever, ever, Okay. Um, he, you know, he's going after uh, China with the, now if he's going to start with, if he's going to start a trade war, I don't know. But it looks like he's doing good things for the country. So I would give him an overall passing grade or an overall good grade. And he really did fuck up with this. And I think his other fuck up was on the Second Amendment. And we're going to get to that later. But I do want to say thank you guys for being here. I'm obviously not going to be as involved as I normally am. But Rebecca, Tammy, Chris, 
uh, Malcolm, yes, Malcolm and uh, Dan, Ken, thank you guys for uh, commenting. Rebecca says, Omnibus bill is not a budget. Trump can sign it, but he can't spend the money uh, or not spend it. He can spend the money or not spend it, however he likes. Obama did it for eight years with these bills. Nothing was challenged. Trump can do the same. Well, I'm not actually sure. Is this not a budget? So this is a discretionary spending bill? Is that what this is? Because I thought that there was actually money chunked out for certain things. Now, does he have discretionary spending? Money, money is carved out for specific programs, yes. Right. But Which would be a budget. There are budgets. There, they are budgets for the different departments. Okay. Whether or not the department, because whether or not the departments decide to spend it, give me a freaking break. It's it, it is a it can be considered a discretionary budget. Believe me when I tell you, people. Every single solitary dime that is being appropriated within this budget will be spent. spent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Will be spent. We are looking at a one trillion, one trillion dollar deficit added on to, to what we already have. Yeah. Yep. To be able to keep the government running. Now, I'm not going to get into what you said yet because you're okay. not done. No. Yeah. No. I'm not done. No. Uh, but that's all right. That's all right. Um, so when when you say Rebecca Obama did it, the, the one thing that I do want to get away from is this, as, as far as our community. I want to kind of get our community to rise above that way of thinking. Yes, it's good to point out what Obama did and the hypocrisies of the left. It really is. Especially when the left attack us on like racism or, or immigration or the wall since they all voted for the fucking thing and then now it's, you know, the demon. Um, but in any case, you know, pointing out hypocrisies by using past sins of the left, I agree with. However, they are past sins of the left. So we should not give the okay to the right to commit sins of today based on the sins of yesterday from the left it's true it's true rebecca what he's saying one of the things that we we as human beings fall prey to consistently and it's because of the compassionate nature that we have is we we are victims of our own emotion um gee i you hit me now i'm gonna hit you because you hit me first yeah right right um uh, let's let's trot out the children the pregnant women and uh children with faces that have flies flying around them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and all of a sudden the heartstrings start to be plucked. Rebecca, I, I understand, and maybe uh, maybe you're more pragmatic than, than that, and, I, and even if you aren't, you have a right to say what you wish to say. My, to you, I was going to say, just to give you a little bit of background on her, she was a, she was a citizen of Australia. Uh -huh. She was there for the gun ban and all of that, so she's okay. very pro Second Amendment. She lives in the United States now. She's actually becoming a citizen the right way. She has Congratulations. Two years, she has two years left to uh, to become a citizen, and she's one Good of she's one of my uh, most loyal uh, viewers. She's an amazing woman. But on this, I just want to say I don't think that like like you were about to continue saying. I'm sorry. I, That's all right. Um, I, I I do think that we need to be better than the left and not let our party. We need to hold our party to a higher standard. Is what basically what I'm getting at. We can't let them commit the same sins that the left has and say it's okay because the left did. I, I don't think we need, we, we need to be better than that. What we want to avoid is the same virtue signaling over and over and over again, utilizing emotions without looking at it from the standpoint of critical thinking. Right, right. Stop trying to deal with it on unfortunately very simplistic terms, albeit we'll sit there. I, I'll sit there and I'll read the Bill of Rights and I'll read the Constitution. This is simple shit, folks. This is not hard. It's not. It's a, we don't need something this thick to begin to understand what the Constitution says. I got a little pamphlet that I carry around in my tool bag that functions as like my purse. I don't care. I don't carry a briefcase anymore. I carry a tool bag. I build shit, and I help other people build bullshit. Yep. Build shit, bullshit. Um, yeah, well, you bullshit a lot when you're building shit. Yeah, but you have to. <laughs> <laughs> you can't dazzle them, you baffle them. Uh, but you were, you've you got more points to make, and then, no, no, that's then I'm going to go after the economy. Okay, no, no, that's fine. Um, I, I personally think, 
I personally, oh, now, now, Rebecca says, Trump can tell the treasurer, the treasury to relocate or reallocate or slow walk the money until he gets what he wants. Now, I don't know that about this bill. You obviously do. Uh, I commend you for doing your homework on this because I don't know. Um, and, and, and normally I don't come to this show this unprepared, but I was at a track meet with my son all day. So Rebecca, he can. And he can ask Mnuchin to do so. Will Mnuchin actually be able to get the Board of Governors to do exactly that? Mm. Because understand who owns the bank. Understand who, who holds the purse strings. Who's actually in control of the money. This is one of the things that, uh, that Alexander tried to push initially with the Continental Congress, and it didn't work. They failed to recognize a central, a central U.S. Treasury. And now, by virtue of a number of things that happened, <laughs> 1791 being one of them. Um, Sorry, I'm reading the comments. You're about to get lit up about your man purse. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> you want, sweetie, trust me. I've got this little flashlight. I mean, flashlight. But anyway. A flesh oh, my God. <laughs> It's a male Omi bod. <laughs> Shit. No, you don't want to know. No, you don't. Omi bod? I, no, oh, no. Never mind. Just oh. keep going. Okay. Anyhow, I'd light me up. I could give two shits and take your stamp. All right, Dan, thank you for, for listening as long as you did. He's got company over. So. Thank you, Daniel. God bless. Uh, no, go ahead. Finish your... Finish your, finish your All right, as far as, as far as the economy is concerned, one of the things that Donald had brought up was um, the utilization of certain segments of the, the, of the employed and the unemployed, the unemployable and those that have disappeared entirely. Right, right. And he's, he's again utilizing, he started utilizing the same configurations of, um, of employment versus unemployment that, have, that we criticized, I criticized, the former administration for. Um, so he's using the same he, metrics that he came out against Obama. With. Yeah. Okay. And the end that's result. A, that's a fair argument. The end result is deficit spending, uh, uh, credit credit based banking. Uh, it's a, to begin to understand the derivatives market, uh, the VIX. To understand how the market is playing is playing this. This is Trump's market. This is bullshit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This market is what happened today. They started talking about the omnibus. The omnibus. What happened yesterday? McMaster gets blown out. Yep. Bolton shows up. What happened to the market? Does anybody even look? What happened to the bond market specifically? That Where are the U.S. bonds right now, folks? Does anybody know? Does anybody care? Do you understand what bond markets are? U.S. treasuries, U.S. notes, U.S. bonds. Who owns them? Who's selling them? Who's buying them? All right, Where's well, the economy well, going? Well, educate me. I mean, seriously. Like, okay, so you're saying that the economy is not doing. You're doing. You're you're saying the economy is not doing anywhere near as well as the what we're being the fed. The economy. Right? When when you're talking about when you're talking about minorities and housing. Right. We are creating one of the 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 mortgage the mortgage bubble that we have created at this point looks like Disneyland compared to 2007-2008. So you're saying 2008 was nothing compared to what we have now. Exactly. But now let's exponentialize that. We're talking about student debt, automobile loans. Well, there's $1 trillion worth of uh, student debt in the country. I exactly. Yeah. And we keep compounding this debt to the point where two, $21 trillion is nothing. We're almost, we're almost at 22 now. We will be at 22 oh, by we'll September. Oh, we'll be over. We'll be way we'll over be, 22. Yeah, yeah, we'll be at 22 yeah. by, by September, yeah. at least. So given that to be the case, am I going to be the, am I the Peter Schiff in the group? I might be. Am I the, am, am I the individual that's going to say, hey, the shit's going to hit the fan, and you better have something to fucking barter besides gold and silver because you can't eat it. <laughs> you can't eat precious metals. 
You want to start playing for real? Learn how to grow food. By the way, I also, I also have a degree in marine biogeology and paleontology. Surprise! Okay, I don't, I don't want you keeling over at my desk. Relax. <laughs> the deal is, folks, the global warming routine. Yeah, oh God. All oh right? God. We're going to play this one. I'm going to play this one all the way out for you. The global warming routine. In actuality, the Earth has been cooling for the past three years. NASA has been smoking you. Well, why didn't Donald tell us? What about the chemtrails? Well, why didn't Donald tell us? I don't know. I don't really give a flying fuck. The bottom line is, you're being lied to. You know, you're making all of the conspiracy theorists that, that watch my channel, yeah. that I normally kind of stick in the corner, yeah. you're, you're making them all feel like... Come on out, yeah! guys! Come on out! I, because... Look, I, I've had pilots that have literally sat there and be like, you know what fucking chemtrails are? They're fucking heat signatures! It's what happens really? when a why don't they, temperature difference... Why don't they dissipate after two or three minutes, pal? Because they can't. Up in the upper atmosphere oh, between please. the... Oh, come on. I've seen a cloud form. I've actually seen a cloud form. If you go to, if you go to a, a NASA launch in Cape Canaveral, mm -hmm. you will actually see the water vapor being burned. Then it creates a cloud, which is exactly what chemtrails do. It sits there you for about... smell a rocket when hang it goes on, off? Hang on. It sits there for about an hour or two, and then, believe it or not, but depending on which way the wind is blowing, it'll come back it and rain. It creates into a cloud. And it, but it'll actually rain. So not only will it... it it'll actually fucking Duh! rain. That, that's not a chemical. It's, it's water vapor that is being put into the atmosphere. When you have a... A high temperature apparatus, like a jet, spewing vapor into the atmosphere at a very high altitude, which is also a very cold altitude, it is going to create a temperature difference. Water vapor forms, condenses, makes a cloud. And all it is is a long fucking cloud. It condenses with what? What do you mean it condenses? Well, water vapor is already in the atmosphere anyway. Yeah, but for, for it to participate. You've got the for, heat. For, for it to participate. Well, whenever you, get, whenever you get a huge temperature difference, you get condensation. That's just... That's you ever the, see your coffee mug sweat? That's the, that's the cold toilet bowl. <coughs> the cold toilet bowl on a summer afternoon. Right, right. It's the same thing. You've got an extremely hot jet in a very cold atmosphere. But the water accumulates on what? what you, uh, on something solid. Bingo. Okay. You're going to tell me there's no solids in our atmosphere? Of course there are. There's microscopic. Yeah, strontium, barium, <laughs> aluminum. Yes, that are naturally occurring. Come on. Come on. If you look at any you're asteroid... Anthropomorpho you're anthropomorphizing. Okay. What what is this like? Uh, uh, <laughs> like, are you about to uh, um, uh, chemtrail shame me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, hang on. I want to get to the comments. Uh, and, 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 and this proves, and this proves, guys, that I will bring people on here that I agree with him on probably ninety-eight percent of what he says. But when he goes down those rabbit holes, I don't agree, okay. and that's just me. Um, essentially, a budget hasn't been passed that the president must follow. No, no, huh, you're fine. Why would, why would you be sorry? Don't be sorry. Look, it's read that no word right there. Apologies broadcasting. I'm on the No Apologies Broadcasting Network, and my show is called before. Unapologetic. Why don't, do you think apologize. I sounded like Milo when I said that? <laughs> oh, Milo, you know, yes. Oh, my God. Um, essentially, a budget hasn't been passed that the president must follow. The omnibus bill and all it contains are mere suggestions. Trump can appropriate funds wherever because a budget wasn't passed. Now, that's actually a very interesting argument. And like Danny said, and if we can get... Don't you think that's fucking scary? It is scary, but but like you said, hopefully we can get the... the what was it? What did you say? The, the something of governors, I'm sorry. The, the Board of Governors. The Board of Governors to, uh, to agree with that. So I'm hoping. Um, Sikoni says, I fucking love this guy. James says, chemtrails, LOL. So, like I said, some guys are going to agree. Um, God, it rains in some big football stadiums. Yes, it does. You're right. Even in some domed yeah, because football stadiums. you have particulates capable of clinging to, or water vapor being able to cling to a particulate. That's what causes precipitation. Volatility index that measures relative price swings. Uh, that's the VIX. That's the VIX. Yes, yes, that's the VIX. Now, I call that the panic meter. That's, that's what a lot of people call it. That. Um, I guess my synopsis on this would be that the Swamp won this round. Um, I, I really, or, were, or were they allowed to win? Or were they allowed to win? And I, and I like that argument. I really do. Because I'm going into this. My big thing is this. Like I, like I keep saying, I, I try to get one point, which is it's okay to criticize your president. As a matter of fact, I think it's your duty to do so. Okay? It's okay to criticize him. And I think that it's your civic duty almost to a point to, to do so when he does something wrong. To, to voice your opinion as an American citizen to yes. let him know. Yes. So, so I'm okay with like getting on Twitter and, and letting him know, hey, 
I think you really screwed up. Do it in an eloquent manner. Don't just go, Donald Trump, you're a fuck up. No, but do it in a, do it in a well thought out, you know, educated manner and let him know why and why not, yada, 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 whatever. But you can still overall support him and, you know, and still criticize him. Like, perfect example. I'm still your friend. I still agree with 98% of what you said, but Kim Charles and me don't get along. But that doesn't mean that, right. but, but what I'm saying is that that doesn't mean that, that first of all, I'm right, you're wrong, or, or you're right and I'm wrong. What it means is I'm willing to still be your friend, support you, yada, 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 even though I disagree with a point. And I think that, I guess that goes to a broader societal problem, which is that we don't have that in large numbers anymore. It's, it's one way or the other. Like, Donald Trump signed the bad bill, therefore, fuck him. Or, he can't do anything wrong. No, it's in the middle. And then when you try to debate people about it, all you get is the, you know, the, the, the fuck you or fuck him. You don't get the debate. You don't get the civil discourse anymore. Well, the common ground ceases to exist. That's what I mean. There is no more common ground. I mean, one one of the series that I that I've been enjoying lately is Steve Crowder's. Yes, convince me. Yes, and changed my mind. Changed, changed my, mind. my mind. I love it. And I love it. It's phenomenal. <coughs> he's got he what is he, he's got a free speech party tonight. Yes. Uh, yep. So, again, it's a set of circumstances where, uh, for what whatever social uh, dogma uh, ailment, yeah, uh, <laughs> gourd pig. Uh, you choose to ride. Uh, there's there's common there's commonality to be found somehow. If nothing else, it's human beings having some degree of empathy, whether it be almost none or a great deal. But it's human beings being able to have normal discourse and the common respect for one another. Yeah, like I can disagree, and I'm not saying I do, but I can disagree with almost everything you say. But I can still respect sure. your right to say it. I can still respect you as a human being. I can still do all of that. Why is it that that's not? Oh, I mean, I understand why it isn't. But what I'm saying is, is we. Sh this is what we're lacking in our society now, and we're wondering why we're so, di you know, uh, disjointed and, and and so divided. It's not because of Donald Trump. It's not even because of Barack Obama. Even though Barack Obama really did turn the screws on that dial uh, to divide us as much as he could. But, I mean, it, I could say that it's been happening since the Clinton years, maybe even before then. But, well, yeah, I, I could, but I'm saying where it really started to perpetuate. You know what I mean? Where it really started to. Because I would venture to say, and this probably isn't going to be very uh, popular with anybody that sees this on YouTube, but who gives a shit? Um, I would venture to say that racism, as far as a, a epidemic, was all but dead before Barack Obama got elected. As, as a widespread epidemic, it was all but dead. I I, and I would disagree. Okay. Now, now, do you mean so, white versus black, or do you mean just racism as a whole? I, I'll disagree. I'll, I'm not going to say white versus oh. black. It's, it's, it's not relevant. Okay. Um, that's, it's, it, that's an easy mark okay. because you have physical differences. Um, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to say there, and I, by virtue of my age, um, I've seen, uh, oh, Individuals in minorities receive uh, the ability, or they're given the ability to be able to uh, get into circumstances where they would normally be disqualified because of lack of experience, lack of education, lack of maturity, uh, lack of money. It's called affirmative action. Okay, true. Now, true. One of the things, and this goes back to, and we're going to bounce all over the place. Holy well, yeah, I mean, I figured we were. This, goes, we were. this goes back to the, the feelings of white guilt. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I don't feel guilty for being the color that I am. Right, because it was Should a I feel guilty about, uh, granted, if you, if you walked up to me in Walmart, you think, holy Christ, what a bum. Or uh, there's a guy that just fell off the turnip truck. When in actuality... Um, sometimes I can wax eloquent, but that being said, I've watched. I was I was a victim of it. My brother was a significant victim of it, um, seeking uh, a law enforcement position, and was passed twice before finally being allowed to enter the halls of Seeger. Uh, and I, you don't have to mention anything. Else. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, that being said, I mean, 
how how much are we going to be punished for things that we have nothing to do with? Yeah. I have no responsibility for what someone's relative suffered two, three, five, seven generations ago. Yeah. I mean, am I I'm gonna get pissed off at all you goddamn Protestants for sending <coughs> sending my fa my my family back in the 1600s and the 1700s, pushing them out of France, when in actuality my family supported the Catholic Church, which fed you fuckers. But no, no, I don't say a word. I don't feel guilty at all. Oh my God, we, somehow or another, my family, the Paquin, were able to get beyond that, establish themselves in Canada, along with the rest of the Huguenots. Half went to Canada, the other half went to Louisiana. How about that? Yeah, and French, we can cook. The How French about Quarter. That? Yes, you can. Now, Sacconi says, Sacconi says, racism never died. Racism never died. Now, now, what I what I want to, it never will. I kind of okay. Sacconi, it won't. I kind of want to clarify what I was saying. I was saying as a national <laughs> epidemic, meaning like. There was no widespread civil rights movements going on like there was in the 60s. Um, there was no, um, you know, back of the bus, water fountain, segregation stuff going on like the 60s. Now, I understand, I, I guess I fall into that same stupid, uh, stupid mire that, that, you know, reverse racism. There is no such thing. It's just racism. But, like, I've, I've actually had this discussion with Ciccone already, um, and, and I'm glad he didn't kick my ass because he's a much bigger black man than I am a white man. I'm glad he didn't kick my ass for it. There's only one thing. There's only one thing that happens when you kick somebody's ass. Hmm. You kick their ass. Yeah, exactly. He didn't change their yeah. mind. No, no. But I'm I'm just glad he didn't because he's a he's a bigger dude than me. But anyway, um, I probably like that. <laughs> no, he's he's really intelligent. He's anything really like Milo? No, we, <laughs> we we broke we broke bread with him. He's a really good dude. Great patriot. Um, but but what I'm getting at is what I'm getting at is I already had this discussion with him. What I mean by systemic racism is. What we're being told now, which is bullshit, um, you know, about how the, the white people are responsible for keeping blacks in the inner cities, which is, I mean, I guess some are. They're the Democrat Party. Um, but, but, like, how do I put this? I, I, don't believe, I don't believe in affirmative action. I don't, I don't believe in, um, you know, um, any race having access to subprime loans and not another race. Uh, only, you know, black only colleges. If there were white only colleges, people would be burning that college down tomorrow. I don't believe in any of that. And that isn't because I'm a racist, it's because I'm a realist. I'm somebody that believes in equality for all, yeah. equality for everybody. I don't want blacks to get special treatment because they're black, but I also don't want them to be persecuted because they're black. I want everybody to have the same opportunity as everybody else. Now, People could say that blacks are being, um, and I'm only using blacks because that's the most common one. Um, blacks are being persecuted in the inner cities and all that. I'll agree with you, but that isn't so much a social, um, uh, a social culture problem as it is a political ideological problem and it's a an brainwashing problem. Well, it is an economical problem, but it's an economical problem that's been perpetrated by a political party to keep people on the new plantations, which would be the inner cities, mm -hmm. okay, and keep them down. Now, now, granted, again, you can blame white people for that, but they're going to be white people with D after their name. Well, you're, you're, you're not going to find Republicans that want to keep blacks in the inner cities and buy their votes. You're just not going to find it. You know, well, you're just if, not. If you take the They've been doing it in Chicago for years. Yeah, that's Democrats. Sick. But if, if you yeah, take yeah. the political party out of it completely, okay, and you just look at it as a people, okay, as a person in, yeah. in that situation, okay, they're not, they're not looking at it as a political party. <laughs> but if you look at it instead as... Um, Power, greed—it's just—it's—it's it's, it's a form of that. What? I so have to read. So Cody says, Cody, "Oh, Cody. Well, they fed me chicken." <laughs> I know, and I feel like I feel bad, but I feel bad. <laughs> I, I don't know. So Cody, I mean, see, this is why I love you because you're okay about cracking a racist joke well, we about yourself. It was like, fucking the great. Where's the watermelon? Oh no, come on! Now you're gonna, now you're really gonna get me. Now you're gonna get me banned. Now you're gonna get me banned. He's the one that brought it up. But anyway, what I'm sitting there saying is that okay, if you look at it as a, I'm the teacher. I'm the band in hell. No, stop it. Jesus. Do you like freedom? I like freedom. Oh my God! Now we're gonna do Benny Hill again, huh? Okay, so. 
So it looks like, now this is going to be something right up your alley. Look, my view count has dropped, and it isn't because of us. Because a lot of people, all, all of my viewers really do love this. It's my view count dropped. I'm hearing in my comments that people are getting booted, lots of lag, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's ridiculous. Now, Sorry, Ken says, Ken not, says no. I still want to build me a cabin in the country stocked with supplies yeah. just in case the current direction is not sustainable. I agree with that. And, and here's the thing. Like, I, hear, I hear people all the time. Um, talk about, you know, uh, I'm going to touch on this really quick because Lags who fucking up, cares? Huh? Uh, Lags, Jennifer said it's Lags, Lags caught, caught up. up. Okay, good. Yeah, Jeff um, didn't realize Same he here. Oh, he, oh, my son was, well, that doesn't matter. That shouldn't He was watching a video or something. Oh, okay. My son it's was your on the, fault. Yeah, Sorry, my son was on I the really internet. No, it's fine. We can all blame Jeff. Everybody say, that's not good. Jeff. Bad although, Jeff. although he ran Bad. a really good two mile run tonight. Um, he needs to get faster, but he ran, would you run a 13 what? 37. 13, 2 miles. That's not bad at all. Um, he needs to get a little <laughs> bit faster, but he came in what, fourth overall? Fifth. Fifth, fifth overall. Okay, not bad. Um, anyway, getting back to what we were saying, I'm going to touch on this too. Uh, you know, everybody says, oh, we need to, pre we need to prep for um, um, the government turning on us and all of that. Okay, ah, each other that's, turning on us. that's a possibility. But civil war is a much bigger possibility yes. as far as like Democrats versus Republicans or, or something like that, you know, liberal versus conservative. That's a much bigger one. But here's a much bigger one than even that. How about economic collapse based on the fact that we are in this bubble that you're talking about? Not only that, but we're $21, $22 trillion. Yeah, look what happened in 2008. It's not sustainable. Well, he's saying the 2008 bubble is nothing well, compared to what we're in now. But yeah, look at how bad it happened. You look at what happens in, in uh, Florida when, or, or Texas. Jen, you're from Texas. But, when a hurricane hits and people don't have water or food for two days, gunshots start ringing out. People start getting crazy. The, the criminals come out. This is what you need to prep for, people. The realistic shit that's coming down the pike. Okay? Not the uh, uh, cloud-born EMP. Sure, that could happen. I'm not saying it can't. And I'm not saying there aren't countries that are, uh, that are you know... Sun. No, no, I'm talking about a man-made EMP, like a, an attack. Oh, an electromagnetic an attack. Pulse. Yeah, EMP, yeah. Oh. I'm not talking about a solar flare. I'm talking about an EMP. But I guess they could do the same thing, right? Solar flares pretty much do the same it's, thing? Yeah, yeah. The same thing. But, but I'm talking about a cloud-borne or airborne, you know, attack on our country, on our grid. I'm sure there are people that are trying to do it right now. As a matter of fact, we know that there are people hacking into our grid to try to shut it down. We know all of this. So let's prepare for the shit that's coming down the pike, Okay. Stop it with the, 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 the fucking tinfoil hat shit and prep for real shit. And it takes money and it takes training and it takes people getting off their ass and doing it. I see so many people today. I actually got into an argument with a woman this morning at 6 o'clock in the fucking morning. And I, was New Yorker. and I was agreeing <laughs> with her. I was agreeing with her and she was arguing with me. I turned around and said the Patriot community as a whole is lazy. They don't get involved. They don't unify around anything. They tear each other down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because one person said, we need to call for civil war right now. I'm like, for what? For what? We still have options. What are we, what are we fighting? Well, exactly. What are we fighting? We need to go to the government. According to them, we need to go to Washington, D.C. Right. and rip these fucking traitors out of the office by their fucking hair and execute them in the public square. Now, this is before, the French hang Revolution. On, hang on. Means. Before anybody says that I said that, okay, I am not calling for that. I am arguing against people that are calling for that, okay? I'm, clarify that. But what I'm getting at is this woman was, you know, not this woman, but another woman was, and I turned around and said, for what? We're still the freest nation in the world. We're still the best nation in the world. Sure, we've, we're fucked up. Ain't no doubt about it. And we've got enemies all around us, within us, everything. But we're still the best nation in the world, and I'm proud that we still have options. I'm, I'm honored that we still have options. And we're still free-ish. So... Sit there and use your options, your, your phone calls, your emails. If you have a Twitter account, if you Instagram, reach out, whatever. Uh, support shows like mine. Support shows like even Alex Jones. Patri anybody that's patriot, patriotic. Support their shows. Get the word out. Post. Go to rallies. Organize a rally. There's a thousand different things you can do. By the way, April 14th, I just want to put this out there. I'm not really plugging anything. I'm not making any money. But April 14th, I'm going to be in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I really would like all of you to be at your state capitals on April 14th for the Second Amendment rally because like I keep preaching on this channel and we may have time to get to it, we may not, but like I keep preaching on this channel day in and day out, the Second Amendment is under the biggest attack that it's been in my entire lifetime. I don't know about yours, but in my entire lifetime, I, I don't, I've never seen another attack that's even come close to this attack on the Second Amendment. This is a huge attack on the Second Amendment. We need to stand up. 
because the Second Amendment protects all the other amendments. If you guys want to continue having some sort of pull in Washington, I know it doesn't seem like we have much, but if you want to have any pull in Washington, <coughs> we need to protect our rights. And the Second Amendment protects all the other rights. Okay, and yes, we know that they're God-given rights. We know that the Constitution can't take them away. But if we want to uh, avoid war, if we want to avoid violence, we need to get involved now. We need to get unified now. Okay, because if we don't, then all we're doing is begging for violence to happen. That's all we're doing. We're allowing violence to happen. We're allowing it to devolve to a point of no return where violence will be the only answer. And I'm not going to be complacent in that. If it comes to it, then yes, I will fight, but I'm not going to be complacent in allowing it to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, I just want to catch up with this. Black Democrats are waking up slowly. Uh, I think blacks across the country are waking up. Um, no, I, I know, Sikoni. I think it's the dumbest thing on earth, and I've already told you that. To, to judge somebody for the color of their skin, which is literally a fucking coin flip, okay? But, you know, they had no, they had no say in it whatsoever. Uh, literally a fucking coin flip. And, and people are gonna people are gonna judge people on that. It's ridiculous. You're a, you're a very dark man, and you were sitting in my living room. I one of the one of the coolest people I've met all fucking you see year. The same guy that was with Sarge. Yeah, no, yeah. no, not Sarge, uh, uh, not Sarge. You Hudson, saw him on uh, Hudson. You saw him on. Well, if you watch my shows, you saw it. It was we, me sitting yeah, in the center okay. of the. Yeah. yeah. So Sarconi so was the guy on my right. I, I was, was going to say. Okay, so as far as with you now, I'm just going to interject this real quick, and this is what I kind of hashtag do, blame Jeff. Yep. Um, so. If you sit there and you, you, you judge somebody on the color of their skin and you sit there and you say, well, you're, you're white, so therefore you can't do anything. You're stuck in this bubble. You cannot move from it. Same thing with black. Yeah. Same thing with right. Mexicans. Same yep. thing with all of it. And I'm just going across the board. Yep. Look at how many inventions, discoveries, uh, technology. Look at rock and roll. Look at everything <laughs> and what we would be missing. Yep, yeah. Right? It just went there. All right. What, rock and roll? No, oh. no, 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 no. Um, I have the opportunity at times to interact with individuals that have, had, that have immigrated from South Africa. Oh, okay. And, uh, so true African-Americans. They're, they're contractors. Right. Uh, these guys left South Africa. They're white. Okay, they left South, South Africa. South African are. And uh, by virtue of the fact that uh, South Africa, since Mandela, uh, has gone almost completely, they're, they're socialist, rapidly going towards communists. There are, there are farms that were previously owned by white farmers yes. yep. that have been abandoned, and they are being redistributed. Yep. Thank you, Stalin. Uh, they're being redistributed to individuals who don't have a clue. Right. Now... I'm going to make some statements that may make people uncomfortable. <laughs> Don't get me banned. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman by the name of Ken Daly. Uh, uh, I think a, a, a respectable individual. Uh, also on YouTube. That And Stefan Molyneux. Look at IQ scores. I'm sorry, folks. Look at IQ scores. And that's all I'm going to say. What the young lady had said moments ago, where's the technology come from? Where's the, where has the art, the classic art, not pissing in a bottle with a crucifix in it, but where, has, where have the classics come from? I don't recall anything coming out of Zimbabwe, although they had some really good music. True. But, but that, you're talking about you're talking about what like I'm talking underdeveloped about culture. countries. No, I'm talking about countries that are older than the United States. Well, I understand that, but they're still underdeveloped. Remember, the United States is an so is the United States. But well, the the United States is considered the leader. Whoa, of, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I get what he's saying though, because I, when I, we were underdeveloped and what I, we I built on ourselves, so no. why can't those countries? See, I separate, and that's the thing. Maybe I'm different. I separate American blacks versus African blacks. Because American blacks were, I am were, too. Okay. Well, I know. No, I know you are. No, I, I'm not saying that you're not. What I'm saying is, is like, I separate the two. Like, so when you were saying like they haven't come from Zimbabwe, you're right. They're, they're mostly coming from America. They're coming from China. They're coming from Japan. They're coming from Europe. They're well and Europe. The classical art, the classical 
uh, stuff was coming more from Europe than anywhere else. Where but did now, Magna Carta come from? Well, that was from Europe. I said classical. That's classical. Okay. I mean, we're going back how many hundreds of years? Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about today's technology is coming from uh, Korea, a lot of Korea, uh, South Korea. You got uh, Japan. Technology? Y yeah. Or the capability of copying. No, no. China is the one that's stealing. No, Japan was doing... Japan... Okay. Well, when, no, it, when we were listening a, to transistor hard. radios when I was 11 years right. old, right? Yeah. Many of them were coming out of Japan. All right. Well, if you had an RCA or a Motorola, yeah, uh, they were usually shortwave as well. Okay. And then you had Magnavox, right, which came out of Japan. The Japanese were exceptionally good at copying, um, and then improving upon it. Uh, look at the look at the genesis of Honda. I mean, it's a phenomenal organization. Subaru, uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, and and the list goes on and on and on. They're, so, okay, they're individuals so. that have built fortunes based on stealing, stealing from other people, right. stealing from those that initially developed it. Who developed it? Okay, so my question then would be in today's world. Yes. Where is most of the technology coming from? Because I don't most think it's the, Most of the intelligence. Right, the intelligence. Most of the intelligence quotients. Right. The highest are coming out of Asia. Asia, yeah. That's what, that's what I was kind of getting at, yeah. The lowest is coming out of Africa. Well, you don't have to say it like that. It exactly. is. I mean, it's facts. It's facts, it's facts, it's facts. And now, Sacconi was and, saying... And everybody's... So Cody we're, was saying, we're afraid when, when, to say this. well, it's the only reason why we're afraid to say this is because the left tells us that we need to be wrong about talking about facts. We're supposed to be guilty. Um, yeah, we're supposed to feel guilty. Now, I'm Ciccone, sorry that I'm better. Sacconi says, well, that, well, okay, but in the same respect, okay, Danny, you're you're a well-read person. You've you've worked hard to become intelligent, smart, you know, to work on your intelligence and all of that. Yeah. There, there's 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 white people out there that are dumber than a box of rocks, and I know because I've seen them. I've seen them personally. Okay, and there's African people that I've actually met as well that are, and I'm talking about South Africa, I'm talking about, uh, I've actually met a couple from Uganda, Zimbabwe, all of that, that were very, very smart. I'm going to get there in a second. Um, Sakoni says, when you talk about Africa, uh, people who are very smart can be killed, just like slaves that can read. Absolutely. No, absolutely, 100%. And I don't, and I want you to, I want you to, I want you to understand, Sakoni, uh, I want to clarify, because I don't want somebody like you that, I consider to be a friend uh, and intelligent to sit there and think that we're that downing we're downing blacks or anything like that because we're no. not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Rebecca says the whites in South Africa are being attacked <laughs> at gunpoint in their homes, murdered, and their properties taken from them right. by force, leaving them with no land. Many escaped to Australia. Yeah, and and it's it's. I mean, I'm sure they're happy to have their lives, but they are escaping from being massacred into a place where they're going to be massacred. Because that, that Australia, sense, yeah. the Muslims have taken over. That makes so, sense as far as what Sakoni was saying. I mean, that really does. Because how do you keep control over a, a, a mass population? Anybody that speaks out with intelligence, get rid of them. Because once they start putting ideas in people's heads... You do it with money. Yeah, now Sakoni, now Sakoni brings up another very good point. Some of the highest IQs can be found in the poorest uh, places. Not a question. Okay, there, there's no question about that whatsoever. As a matter of fact, my, my daughter was just doing a, I can't believe we're, we're even going to keep going. There, but there are individuals my daughter, that, that, that defy the bell curve. Right. My daughter was just doing a report on uh, Frederick Douglass, which, okay. which, you know, he was a, uh, a freed slave and all of that. And, yes. and the whole thing about it was the fact that he was illiterate and they wanted to keep him illiterate. And the power of reading, the power of becoming literate, would make him dangerous. Mm -hmm. And I explained to her that knowledge is power, okay? And there was a time, yeah, correctly, yeah. there was a time, no, knowledge is power no matter what. Power can be used, good or bad, but it's still power. So having knowledge is power, period. Um, th th there was a time when there was... And we can get into political argument because we know, and I agree with Rebecca, go watch uh, Hillary's America by Dinesh D'Souza. Oh, it's a phenomenal movie. Yes. And, it, and it does explain to you the racist background of the Democrats, to, you know, like hook, line, and sinker, what it actually was. Now, the Democrats, 
way back when during the Civil War days, before the Civil War days, during the slave ownership days, which by the way, I want to set a couple of statistics straight for you. Three to five to seven percent, as that's about as high as I've heard it. Seven percent of the population of America back then actually owned slaves. And you were almost as likely to be owned by a black person as you were a white person. But one thing's for sure, when the Civil War started, there was not one Republican that owned a slave. Not one. It's factually proven. This is something that can be easily disproven if it was true or untrue. And to this day, Dinesh D'Souza has never been proved why is untrue. That? Why? What do you mean, why is that? Why, why were there no Republicans that were slaveholders? Because it was morally reprehensible to them. Because they didn't need I'm gonna to be treated. I'm going to challenge that. Okay, challenge I'm going to challenge Challenge that. What was it? And I'm going to challenge it by asking this question. What was the real reason the Civil War was actually fought? Uh, it wasn't over slavery. It was over the fact that the government stepped in and told the South that they had to, I forget exactly what it was, but they had to. It was export tariffs. Oh, yeah, it was, it was tariffs or taxes, but they, they had were, to do it their they way. Were, they were tearing it because of the fact that the Southern agriculture was as successful as it was, right. and they were making a, a considerable amount of money sending their product over to Europe that the, the feds, the federal government, again, uh, by virtue of by virtue of their ability to be able to levy taxes, <coughs> started taxing the living daylights out of southern agriculture, mm -hmm. and southern agriculture was not uh, was not mechanized. Right. And so basically, the slavery slavery thing. was the ability for the moralists to say, "Well, the way you're making money is bad because you have slaves." Not because we're trying to ruin you financially. We're trying to penalize you for the success that you've had. And our northern industrial capabilities aren't that of Europe. We don't have the kind of uh, productive horsepower to be able to export back to Europe. We're still buying shit from them. We haven't gotten there yet. We did. But nonetheless... <laughs> But nonetheless, <laughs> I love to go. I'm sorry. He says I don't give a damn why they fought the Civil War. I'm free, bitch. <laughs> no, amen, you got brother. That shit, no, right? amen, brother. Amen. And, and I guess that would be one time that I'm okay with the game of politics. And 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 I understand what you're saying. It was basically hypocrisy and bullshit that, that yeah. led into it. But I guess that would be one time that I'd be okay with it because honestly. I think we can all agree now that owning another human being is morally reprehensible and you're a scumbag for doing it. Um, as a matter of fact, they didn't even think of them as human beings because once the Civil War was fought and it was settled and all of that, the Democrats fought to keep um, blacks as property. They were subhuman. But they were I'm subhuman. a nasty woman and uh, yeah. I am going to yeah. support all of those beautiful Arabs yeah. and those wonderful Islamists. That this figure. We're we're on to everything, man. I I, I have, I've woman. been trying to I've been trying to get Danny on the show since I started the show before I even started on No Apologies Broadcasting. So I mean, you know, we're gonna let the show run on for a little while longer, probably until about an hour thirty. Um, but uh, but basically, we're just covering all topics, and I'm glad we are because you know how it is. When we get into rants, we get into rants here normally when it's just me. And now I've got somebody that I do respect, and uh, as a guest, uh, well, I mean, I respect all my guests, but you know what I'm getting at. I've been wanting to what have you on the show. I, I, well, no, I was going to talk about these, the Second Amendment a little bit, but I actually want to stay. Please, I want, well, I actually want to stay on the Civil War just a little while longer. Okay. Um, I, I want everybody to understand that because this ties into the Second Amendment, so I'm going to segue right into it. Um, I want everybody to understand, like I said in yesterday's show, or the, uh, the, the I say it a lot, but anyway, you know. The first gun control measures were actually racist. They were born out of racism. Okay, they were born out of racism because the the, the scared former slave owners, now under the Constitution, you know, blacks had the same rights as their former slave owners. So, or their former owners, I should say. So, the the gun control bills started flying in the deep south. Why? Because they were afraid. They were afraid that blacks now had the power to exact vengeance on them. Mm -hmm. And so they needed to keep guns out of the hands of the blacks. So th that's where these gun control laws come from, and they haven't stopped. Okay, all of these new gun control laws disproportionately uh, affect black people. They really do. Um, so, you know, in inner cities especially. 
So, well, like I said, what better way is there to commit cultural genocide exactly. while, what, hang on, what better, because that was formed out of uh, racism as well. I know. But what better way is there to commit cultural genocide or race genocide um, while brainwashing them into voting for you? You stick them all in one spot. You promise them the earth, moon, and stars. You strip them of all the law-abiding guns in the name of saving children. You put Planned Parenthood in there to kill as many of their children as you possibly can. And then when voting time comes, you come in like a white knight, sometimes literally white, the Democrat, run in there and say it's the Republicans' fault, it's the white people's fault, it's, it's the conservatives' fault, and all of that. That is why I fight for blacks harder than most of these blacks do. <coughs> most. Bl uh, bl black Lives Matter. Black Lives Don't Matter to Black Lives Matter. They're a fucking terrorist organization that is an arm of the leftist propaganda machine. Soros pays them all, guys. Okay? Soros pays every fucking one of them. All right? I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent and, and a McMaster. rant here. What was that? And McMaster. And McMaster. But, Sor uh, but, but I mean, I, I know I'm going off on a bit of a rant and a tangent, but this goes right into the Second Amendment. The, everything about the Second Amendment should be fought for by blacks just as hard, if not harder, than we fight for them as whites. Because they want the guns out of your hands so that they can kill you more efficiently. So that they can brainwash you more efficiently. Make no mistake, they don't give a flying fuck about you. They don't. And I, I would venture to say that Republicans probably don't in large numbers either anymore because they've, they've become such... Like concreted leftist into tools, Washington, huh? Concreted into Washington. DC. Yeah, concreted into Washington D.C. That they've become just as much liberal as the liberals that they claim to hate. Okay, so so what I'm getting at is people like me, true patriots. Sacconi is a great black leader in his community. You've got Coleon Noir, Alan West. Uh, oh my God. Huh, Alan West. I love Alan Look West. Holy crap. I know he doesn't have a temperament. What a wonderful man. He is, yeah. What a yeah. phenomenal um, individual. You've ben got Carson. Carson. You've got Ben Carson, another wonderful, not on the same level as Alan West. But you've got all of these people that are true black leaders, that give a fuck about their own people. Okay? And then you've got white boys like me that give a fuck about black people. Okay? Colin Powell, there's another one. Uh, you got you got... Neil Conn. I know he's a neocon, but he still was a champion for what blacks could become. They could become educated. They could become the, the opportunity is there. They could become anything they want to be. Exactly. They don't, don't have to I live. See, I didn't see color. I saw a neocon. Sure. No, I, I got you. But what I'm that's what I'm on right now is the is the, is the is, no no it's okay is the subject of color it is that, that and that's my point. Most of us really don't see color. We just use it as an adjective. Okay, you, because it you know. That, that guy over there, that doesn't, you know, th that black guy that was six foot, that, that guy, yeah, that, that's the guy I know. It's just an adjective. It has nothing to do with, oh, that means he's dumber, or that means he's this, or that. No. It's like saying it's the guy with the beard. Exactly. Or the guy it's, with the ponytail. Exactly. It has, it's, like just, it's just a descriptive the the adjective. Oh. That's all it is for most of us. Okay, and you have the fucking yeah, those are fucking good old boy racist bastards, and I can't stand them either. And you've seen me fight them too. Okay, but I, I know I got on a uh, um, uh, a tangent just, there. Well, but you know, it kind of goes. Sacconi says that is correct. Ex slave with a gun, hell no. Uh, I saw that. Hand hand, what you were saying is an adjective. So is assault. Yeah. So is assault. Ex well, assault is assault is actually an action. Well, I understand, but you know how they say they're saying assault weapon. Yeah, well, it's a verb. Actually, assault is a verb. Yeah, I'm going back to English class. I learned this the other day, by the way. I had to look it up. Sacconi says, can't lie. I would have shot me a, a while back. Nah, man, you're a good dude. You're a good dude. Uh, Share to a few groups I'm in. Thank you, Rebecca. Sacconi says, well said, and that's what I call a racist. Uh, yeah, there you go. Welfare plan, parenthood, all of it. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Margaret Sanger was a deep, deep racist. Why she you know hated it. Yeah, and here's the thing, all of you. Thank you. All of you NRA hating black people out there that see me in TV land or whatever, YouTube land, okay? The NRA was formed as a civil rights organization to ensure that blacks had the same gun rights as their former masters. They trained them dun, dun, dun. They trained black people how to use weapons and defend their families and stand up for the Constitution that belonged to them as well. Support the NRA, people. They support all of us. Not just white, all of us. Yes, Rebecca. Yeah, feed them GMO Plan, food to kill them off Planned slowly. Planned Parenthood 
did begin. Margaret Sanger was a racist. She wanted to eliminate the black race. Yep. Planned Parenthood was created to do exactly that. And guess who's still being... And, and, and they're being funded by the government. They're, they're still being funded by us. No, they're not, nothing is funded by the government. Everything okay, is sorry, funded yeah. by us. He is yeah. the government. Yeah. 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 Nothing, whenever you hear federal funding, it's our, it's our funding. Money. I know, it's taxpayers. And we are the ones... So, you know, when Obamacare came around and people didn't want to buy into it because they didn't feel that it was in their religious right to support somebody that could have birth control, this, that, the other. Right. And they got step, their throat stepped on. But yet, well, we it's, can't it's, sit there and say anything about Planned Parenthood using my money to go and kill somebody. You're not even You're not even reading the comments, and you're dead on. Sikoni oh, said, yeah. what killed me about history oh. is every strong black leader ended up getting killed, along with every white man that tried to do the same thing. You know why? It's because it doesn't fit the fucking narrative of the globalist leaders that want to turn America into every other fucking nation on Earth. Because they cannot stand American exceptionalism. They cannot, ast ex they cannot they stand, stand American greatness. They can't stand free-thinking, critical-thinking people. They need us all to be mindless robots that can be controlled and put back into slavery. All of us. All of us. Okay? They want all of us back into some form of bondage. We're going to be the peasants that get to be ruled over by the monarchs. They okay. want to go back to castles. Yeah, they want to go back kings to, to castles, kings, queens, and all of that shit. Hello, Christopher. Christopher Stronk, a very, very awesome patriot right there. He finally arrived. Good to see you, buddy. Rebecca says, that's disgusting. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it really is. And it is truly disgusting how they still treat. And you think about it. Here's the fucking hypocrisy to the utmost level. Planned Parenthood is funding a fucking march for life. A march for life. Yeah, it's Another a gun march. It's an anti-gun march to save, save the children. children. These people, this organization is responsible for killing 300,000 to 500,000 kids a fucking year. These scumbag motherfuckers. They are responsible for killing a half a million babies a year. But they're going to take up gun control. Think about how this just turns into what I just said. They want guns off the street. Why? Because then the criminals get to kill the people that they fucking hate quicker. Okay, that's what they do. That's what they want. It's all a big fucking circle, and everybody needs to wake up and see it. And what do they do with the material once they extract it from the woman's womb? Oh, I don't even want to. What no, do they no, do no, with no, it? No, 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 no. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not. Let's not. That, well, we know they sell them. We know that. They sell the body parts, and I'm not going to go any further than that. Okay. Okay, I'm not. I'm just for... Not. I'm talking about money. I, I know that they sell it for money. They make money. They yeah. make money. They make a lot. Okay, of they're they're they are the scum of the earth, pieces of shit of our society, and yet we still fund them, and we still fund them with a half a million dollars a year or half a billion dollars a year. Excuse me. <sighs> Sacconi says exactly. They want all of us to be slaves. If we are the, if we are all bosses and business owners, there is no workers for them. Exactly. Why do you think Sacconi? You're Sacconi. Seriously, Kamala Harris, which is most likely going to be running in 2020. Why do you think that she has actually said we have lost even the the guarantee of the black vote? So that's why we need the illegal immigrants. She was caught on tape saying it. Okay, they know it. They know that your people are waking up. They know it. They know that LBJ was slightly off. Okay, they know that. He said 200 years, you guys voted for him as a block. I'm not talking about you. But as a block, you voted for Democrats for roughly 80 to 90 years. Okay, but so he was about halfway there. Yeah, he was halfway there. Yeah. Oh, the, the quick math? Yeah, it's, it's a rant. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, he, 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 was, he was about roughly halfway there, okay? So, slightly off, all right? But the point is, is that he's... <laughs> the point is, is that you guys are waking up. And I don't mean you, again. I mean as a block. You know, the, 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 the black Americans, they are waking up to this. Kamala Harris is actually leading the charge. And believe it or not, she's, as much as I hate her, She's on. She's a. She's ahead of the curve. She's telling the Democrat Party, "Hey guys, we need to wake up to this. We need to wake up that to the fact that whites already figured it out. Blacks are figuring it out, and that's not because you're dumber. It's because you've been put on the fucking plantations of the inner cities and like this. That's all they've been keeping you. Okay. And generation, gen, for generations now, for generations now, they've been just keeping you down. Okay. So with that said, you've been brainwashed." As a, as a block of voters, you've been brainwashed. Well, you're waking up, 
And I'm so proud to be alive during the moment that you people are waking up. Yes, I said it. White guy said you people. I'm gonna get fucking burned. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. You people. Yeah, you We're people. You, can't, you referring, can't say you people. Referring to those individuals yeah. who carry EBT cards. <laughs> It, well, some of them. No, no, it's, no they're not going to wake up. They're there, not going to wake there's up. There's more than black people carrying. Okay, folks. but those Amen are not. But those people are not going to wake up. Okay, and I don't care if they're black, white, or whatever. And I know white people that game the system just oh, as bad as the blacks. Yeah, well, they'll wake up when it's all. They'll wake up when it's all done. They try and yeah. use the EBT yeah. card, and it yeah. don't work. They'll wake up when it's all gone. But I'm talking about blacks that actually want something better for them, their family. They want something. They don't want handouts. They want. Or they don't, yeah. They don't want handouts. They want to, they want to make a living based off of the sweat of their brow, kind of deal. You know what I mean? And those are the good ones. Those are the ones that I want to wake up, and they are waking up in droves. The ones that want to use the government and make me pay for them, fuck them. I don't give a shit about them. I don't care what color you are. I don't fucking care about you. I don't care about anything about you. Think, of, think of. I, I const, or I, I have the opportunity sometimes to to go back into my YouTube stuff. And pull up that one interview that they had in, I think it was Austin, Texas, either at Houston, where a an individual who is a welfare queen called up two individuals in a talk show and told them flat out, why should I go to work? Yeah. Yep. Why? Yeah, because they're and actually getting more money. Every yeah. single solitary logical reason not to go to work. Why not? Because I'm getting paid to stay home. She she got child support. She got uh, uh, housing, Section Eight. And hey, why go to work? She yeah. was making considerably more than Middle America. Yeah, exactly. And, the, and the, Middle America making, making what? Making less. They're making the, the, those people that mooch off the system are making more money uh, than than I've ever seen in my life. I, I don't make a lot of money. You know that. Okay, but but I, but I don't complain about anybody else. I don't. But I do complain about people that that you know rape my my wife and you for paying taxes and all that. Because right now I don't have a job, so I can't really complain about me paying taxes. But they're taking food out of my family's mouth so that they can live high on the hog. They're taking food out of your family's mouth so that they can live high on the hog, and they're not doing anything for it. You bust your ass. I've seen you walk with a cane because you bust your ass. I know. I've seen you do it. My wife comes home and I know what kind of pain she's in. I know how bad my knee felt when I was working. I know how bad I fucked myself up. Yeah. Okay? We all bust our ass. Ciccone busts his ass so, you know, all the time. There's all of these people do. My brother, all the time. We know that he works all the damn time. And he's a ward vet on top of it. And, and... Oh, don't even get me started they on the live, benefit thing. They live, we live... <laughs> We live so far under the poverty line, it's not even funny, but these jackasses that mooch off the fucking system based off of our backs, and then again with the illegal immigrants, you tie it all in, okay? These motherfuckers are making a living that's four times higher than I do, and they do it by, by stealing from me. I cannot stand it. It drives me up a wall. So, Coney, I, I'm, I'm taking a look at the liquor store in every corner, and the chip's called, uh, yep. called Rap Snaps. Yep. Is by design and not by accident. One of the things that that I find significantly interesting is consistently, and I, yeah, I may be a little bit older than you, but I've watched uh, the beaten <laughs> gen the beaten generation. Oh, the, yeah, the PC. I'm sorry, I was I was yeah. laughing at Ken's comment. Uh, I've, I, I've 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 lived through the end of the beatnik, so to speak. Uh, yeah. I, I was at Woodstock, believe it or not, when I was Holy a kid. Holy shit, you hippie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was actually young. Wow. I mean, I was young. My, my cousin kidnapped me. Uh, we went to Yasmir's farm. But that being said, I, I've listened to the languages change uh, during the 60s and the 70s. Uh, pills were called this, that, and the other thing. They were bumblebees and this and that, reds, yellows. Uh, and Mary Jane. My mother worked for the prosecutor's office. Now, when I was in junior high school, I went to a college prep school run by the Benedictine monks. I was almost a monk, my God. Oh, my God, you were oh, my the, father. The, the brown skirts that they wore were absolutely stunning. But in any event, <laughs> and they loved the altar I have completely lost but, control of this show. <laughs> anyway, 
Yeah, yeah the language changes, Sacconi. And it's a, it's a matter of which culture do you want to belong with. Me, I seem to be able to shuttle in between a whole bunch of them. And you, you've got the Danny culture because yeah, I got the Danny culture. There's a party going on in here. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're all having a great time. Oh my God! I'm in heels and a feather boa right now, and tomorrow I'll be in attack helicopter. But <laughs> <laughs> my daughter says that all the time. I identify as an attack helicopter. Yeah. Oh uh, man! If you ought to see my M1 Abrams. Oh Jesus! But, <laughs> with a Sabo. All right, all right, all right, all right. A sabo. A sabo. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we start speaking in a language that nobody else seems to want to understand. Yeah. Or they want to understand, but we don't want them to. We want to be exclusive. We want to talk in, in, in ways that you're not going to quite get what we're saying. Snap a cap. Yeah. Click clack. Yep. You know, how about, I, how about that, older? Uh, that 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 car is butter or fat, P H A T and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, and it 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 bothers me. It bothers me greatly. One of the things that I don't get involved with, and a lot of people with them. <laughs> what was that? He said an attack helicopter <laughs> with a Merce. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, sweetie. I should bring it in and show you. Oh Jesus. It's it, it's my it's my electrical contractor's oh bag. Oh my lord! It's got a little flap on it too. Okay, so what pisses you off? Yeah, I was what, gonna say what. What what, you what, ang what angers me is, and I'm not I'm not on Facebook. <coughs> I refuse. Yeah. I have my own opinions of Zuckerberg and Schmidt and the rest of the fuckers. We that call him Zuckerberg here. That well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, and um, I would defer to the American intelligence media, if you're interested in in finding out a little about where that went. Um, we are being immersed on a daily basis in these little things. Oh yeah. Alright? Dopamine. We want to be recognized. We want to be respected. We want to feel as though we have a degree of control in our environment. We want to be verified that our opinions, our feelings, our emotions are right, yep. just. Um, I have uh, a moniker that I use, l'homme galant, which is the gallant man. Uh, yes, I'm French Canadian. Now you're the American. bottom line, is, huh? <laughs> now you're American. <laughs> the, bo the bottom line is. This is the weapon, folks. This is what they're going to nail you with. Yeah, look at what they did with Pokemon Go. I mean, for God's sake, look what they did with Pokemon Go. Jesus. You, want, you, want, you want to appeal to like-minded people. Okay? And I, I subscribe to an organization called the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. Uh, it's run by a fellow who actually taught at Temple University. Uh, he's a uh, paleoclimatologist. Um, and we, he discusses weather and the coming ice age, and I'm not going to go that down that rabbit hole. But that being said, you are going to congregate with like-minded people. You're going to start talking that same language, and you're going to lose everybody else for the for reasons of exclusivity. To answer Rebecca's question, no, he is not. He's just a. Uh a concerned citizen that I Who? met at a job. Who? Uh, you? Where? Where? Where's that? Place? She asked oh. you. Are is you? Your is your guest on YouTube? No, I came not in at all. Um, no. I he met him when he comes over. I, subs yeah. I subscribe to a, a number of YouTube channels. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just I a concerned citizen. Honest to God, I subscribe to uh, Democracy Now of all things, uh, only because I want to find out what the enemy's talking. about. I was going to say, you know, I, I've actually looked at Every Town USA to see what they're doing. Um, uh, yeah. You know, against guns and no, stuff I like mean, that. I, I pretended I was somebody. I yeah, was. Um, my wife pretended like she was uh, Antifa or interested in Antifa uh, to find out about the uh, protests that were coming up. Uh, they've already passed, and there was no big. Uh, it's the twenty fourth. Oh, the twenty fourth. That's Saturday. On Raleigh, um, but it's supposed to, to be in Raleigh, and uh, they're supposed to be protesting there. So. Is that tomorrow? Uh, yeah, that's tomorrow. Shit, yeah. I don't want to go to that. Yeah, I gotta work. 
Oh, well, that's the that's the uh, they're doing the uh, anti-gun rallies and all that tomorrow. No, but I bring you know I bring some persuasion with me. You really want to you really want to do that? You yeah. re- well you, you take know. the freaking black diaper off of your face. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know Love what? Remember what? Remember what, I, remember what I said two? Remember what I said two two weeks ago? I believe it was. This is 2018. It's a year of midterms. Okay. Um, Yes. Understand this. Understand this. You're going to have Antifa coming out of the woodwork again. Look what happened last night with BLM. They uh, rioted in Sacramento over um, the footage being released of, uh, I'm assuming, I didn't even pay attention to it, honestly. Uh, I'm assuming a white cop that shot an unarmed black man. I really don't know the story, so I'm not going <coughs> to weigh into it. What I will say this is it's absolutely amazing, amazing, at the numbers that they can get in less than 24 hours. It's absolutely amazing. It's almost like they were expecting. Yeah, but you got to understand, I belong to a militia. I belong to a bunch of patriot groups. Yeah. I'm hooked into social media like, you, you know what I mean, like you're not, right? Yeah. Like these guys are. I've got Twitter. I've got all of that. And I can't get 10 people to show up to a training exercise, whereas these people can get 1,000 to show up in 24 hours. Because they have nothing to do and they're going to get paid for it. Okay, but that's, that's what I'm getting at is... They, it's almost like they knew what they, were, uh, what they were going out there for ahead of time, and it's also almost like, look at this, we're getting throttled right now. Yeah. Um, it's almost like um, you know, they, they're, they're getting paid for it. This is what Facebook does. This is what Facebook does because they can't have conservative minds and free-thinking, critical-thinking people talking about it. Hey, Mark. Um, Mark, I just wanted to, I want to say something to you. There's a gentleman that... Is a, he's the CEO of an organization called Leader Technologies. And someday, Mr. Trump is going to write a check to that CEO for $1 billion. You know what's going to happen to Facebook, Mark? It's going to cease to fucking exist. It might. It's going to cease to exist. The Alphabet organization, Mr. Schmidt, kiss my ass. I know where you are. I've got a pretty good idea, and there's a few of us that do. And it's not in Hawaii. What no. were you doing in North Korea? Huh? Sakoni says, uh, amen, and it will never be the same. Five people that do show up to, to FTX. Yeah, and Sakoni, I've still got to make it out to one of yours, and I really do want to. I just, I was really busy last month. And I'm going uh, April 14th to, which is my, my next FTX, uh, with uh, the Guardians is on April 14th, but I can't make it because the National 2A Rally is that day, and I'm going to be in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, but speaking at the 2A Rally. And then I'm on the Big Sarge Show that night, so I'm going to be in studio with the Big Sarge yeah. Show, and uh, it's going to be a very busy weekend. Yeah, it's You're just... Be... You're like Mike Cernovich. <laughs> wow. Well... It's my birthday weekend. Um, <laughs> a fireside debate-ish. I like it. Um... <laughs> I, I hope you guys did enjoy this. We are getting throttled. I can see my I can see my feed breaking up like crazy. So I hope you guys did enjoy this. I would really urge you guys to get out to Etches of Sketches, Dawn's Classic Creations uh, Check out the Guardians Militia. We are a good group of people. Hell, check out Sacconi's Militia uh, that he belongs to. Um, uh, United, uh, God damn it, I always screw it up. United Patriots of North Carolina. You, you'll find it. Sacconi, type it. Sacconi, type it out, please. I always screw it up. They're a good group of people too. Um, but the Guardians actually do sponsor me, and they, you know, they're really good. You know James. He's a really good dude. Sacconi loves James. Um, go check out noapologies101.com. Uh, I'm not going to say by who. Uh, I'm not going to do that to somebody, but um, I'm honored, and I'm flabbergasted, and I want to say I'm humbled, and I mean this, and I want to end the show on this. I'm humbled at the fact that I had somebody approach me today wanting to know, and I'm not saying this for anybody else, so don't think that I'm panhandling because I'm not. But they actually approached me today saying that once they get their bank account situated, this, that, and the other thing, they would like to know how to make regular donations to the show. That, to me, is the most humbling sentiment that anybody could possibly... Like, somebody wants to give their hard-earned money to me for sitting in front of a camera and just talking to you. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't grasp it. I, I don't quite comprehend it. But I'm honored and I'm floored by it. Um, and no, that is not so that everybody starts donating, although that would be really nice. I mean, I could use it, you know, a lot of it. But anyway, don't, don't. 
Uh, I'm not saying. I'm just, and I'm not telling you who it was. Buy the merchandise. Um, yeah, you know what? If you, I would almost say this. If you want to support the show, um, cash donations are great. Everybody, you know, nobody's going to turn them down, okay? I'm not going to say that. But what I would really like, so that you feel like you're getting something out of it, as well as us, buy some of the coasters. Can I see the, get real quick? Buy some of the coasters or <coughs> buy the mugs that are going to be coming out. You know how what Etches of Sketches does. Hell, you know what Etches of Sketches does. It's, a gorgeous, it's, it's gorgeous stuff. Honest yeah, to so, God. So, I mean, this is, this is what they're going to look like. This is pretty much the final product um, right here. Look at this. This is the Unapologetic Patriot Coaster. Okay. And I'll even tell you what they are. They're tiles um, that have been, you know, ceramic tiles that have been painted. They've been clear coated. There's pictures glued onto them. There's going to be cork feet on the back of them. That's what they are, but they take a while to create. They take, they take, they, a, take a while. they take a while to create. They take work to create. Um, <coughs> you know, and look at look at the shine and sheen on that. And they're clear coated, so they are protected. I can I see mean, myself. That is that's good quality stuff. For a set of four, it's twenty five. For a set of six, it's thirty five. And for a set of eight, I believe I set the price at forty two fifty. Um, plus eight dollars shipping if you order anything over a hundred bucks. Uh, we're throwing free shipping. So I want you to buy things so that you get something out of it as well. So, yes, you're going to be helping the show, but I want you to do it to get something out of it, okay? Anyway, that, that's my that's my, sh my shtick, okay? Um, Jen says, uh, double feature with Ted on April 14th and Big Sarge. Yeah, and look, look tomorrow because I'm going to be going live out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, at the uh, grand opening of uh, Gander Outdoors. Um, they're opening up. Uh, oh wow, the feed is fine on your end. Okay, it looks really choppy here on my end. Um, they're opening, they're re reopening what used to be Gander Mountain. Now it's Gander Outdoors in Fayetteville. Uh, I had reached out to them and told them that uh, you know if they were if they would not sell semi-automatic weapons to uh, 18 to 20 year olds, I would not support them and I would tell people about that. Uh, but they said they would sell to anybody that federal and state law currently allows, which guess what is 18 year old people. So. I'm going to go there and I'm going to try to do an interview with a manager or uh, something and I'm going to try to just uh, give you guys a look around the store and see if I can get some interviews done and stuff like that. So look forward to that. I think Sarge is going live out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania during the day. I'll be doing mine around 4, 430, maybe 5 o'clock latest. Uh, and then at 10 o'clock, Sarge has an anti-terrorism expert on his show. Phenomenal show. You know it's going to be a great show. Sarge always hits it out of the park. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being here, my brother. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I hope we can do it again. I really do. Uh, it's, I mean that. It's, it's interesting. It is? It's, it's kind right. of fun. All right. And you, now you know why I'm uh, addicted to it. Rebecca, thank you so much. for uh, It's beautiful. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Thank you for the awesome debate in the comments. I'm sorry I wasn't more engaged, but obviously, I mean, this guy rants bigger than I do. All right, guys. You have a good one. Um, thank I, you. Uh, I am going uh, live around 4.30 to 5 o'clock, I believe. Four, 4 to 5, look in that hour. Um, uh, that's from Chris Taranka. Ken says, I don't subscribe to many because I hate having to go out and pick the videos up off my lawn covered in dew. I love it. All right, brother. I love you guys. Have a good one. God bless, and I will see you tomorrow.